Hey everyone, this is Tony Teaches Tech. I'm Tony, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to host your own email server with mail in a box. Now, I'm gonna be using Vulture. It's a VPS service provider to host my email server, but you can use Vulture, Contabo, Linode, and DigitalOcean. Any one of those will work for this or something else where you have SSH access to the server and where you do have the email ports unblocked. That's ports like uh, 25 specifically for outgoing email messages. Now I'll show you in this tutorial how to check to see if those ports are open. And if they're not, you'll probably have to submit a ticket with your server provider to have them unblock those ports. So the only other thing you'll need is a domain name. I'm going to be using Google domains for my domain name, but you can use pretty much any domain name registrar that you want, as long as you have access to the DNS settings. So there's a lot of steps to this tutorial, but I'll walk you through each step. Uh, so don't worry if you don't have a lot of background in this area, I'll do my best to uh, communicate the steps to you. So with that said, let's go ahead and get on into the tutorial here. All right, like I said, I'm gonna be using Vulture to host my email server. So let's create a server instance. So click on deploy instance, and these steps will be different if you're not gonna use Vulture, but that's just what I'm using in this uh, tutorial. All right, let's do a server in LA. We're gonna pick Ubuntu version 18.04. At the time of this video, this is the latest version that Mail in a Box supports. Uh, I believe the next version that they'll be supporting is 22.04, so we have to wait a little bit for that to happen. Um, we're gonna do the two gigabyte per month plan. If you have a lot of traffic, you might wanna bump that up, uh, but this is sufficient for what I'm anticipating. We can always scale up if we need to later on. Um, now everything else looks good here. If you have an SSH key, go ahead and select that. I have a couple of videos on how to set this up. This just allows you to log into your server without a password. And now for the server host name and label, uh, make sure you do something similar to this. So uh, mail in a box, you wanna start your host name, your server host name with box dot your domain name. So in this case, I'm gonna be using the domain name netwits io. So if you have a, um, a, a domain name that is example.com, you'll want to do box.example.com. But okay, in this case, I'm going to do box.netwits.io. And just to prove that's the case, here is uh, my Google domains dashboard. And this is the domain name that we'll be working with today. And we'll be in here working with some of these DNS settings later on in the tutorial. Okay, so let's go ahead and deploy that instance. Uh, this will take about a minute, so let's just fast forward through this. Okay, our server has been spun up. It's at this IP address, so let's go ahead and copy that and open up a terminal window or PuTTY if you're on Windows, and we'll do ssh root at your IP address, and this will log us into the server. The first time you connect, you'll see a message like this. Do you wanna continue connecting? Go ahead and type yes, hit enter. And now we are sitting in the server in Los Angeles as the root user. Okay, so now that we're in here, um, let's just make sure that we're running the version of Ubuntu that we selected. So lsb underscore release dash a, that's gonna show us that we are indeed running Ubuntu 18.04. And that is important. Again, uh, you can't go above that at this point uh, to 20.04 or anything else. This is the latest stable version that mail in box supports. Now, the other big thing here that I wanna check is to make sure that our outgoing email port is um, enabled, it is allowed, it's not blocked. And we can do that really easily with the telnet command. So I'm just gonna uh, copy and paste this here. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is type telnet portquiz.net and then the port that we're gonna test is 25. So hit enter. And if you see something similar to this connected to portquiz.net, uh, then you're good to go. You shouldn't have any problem sending or receiving email, specifically sending email. Um, so that passes that test. Let's go ahead and get out of here. And like I said, uh, I forget, you have to do command, no, control, close bracket, hit enter, and then type quit to get out of there. Um, like I was saying, if, if that fails that test for you, you're gonna have to submit a ticket with your service provider, your your whoever you got your hosting from, and ask them to unblock the email ports, specifically 25 in this case. There's a couple other ports that you might have to look into. Um, but we're good to go with that. So let's go ahead and update our system. So apt get update and apt get, oops, apt get, uh, we'll say dash yes, upgrade. 
and this will just go ahead and get the latest version of the packages on our system uh, and update them. So we will skip forward through this. All right, our system is up to date. So let's go ahead and install mail in a box. And you can do that uh, with this command right here, curl dash S and then the URL to mail in a box dot email slash setup dash SH for the cell shell script. And then we're gonna pipe that to uh, sudo dash capital E bash. And that'll go ahead, download that script and start to execute it. So go ahead and type that in, hit enter and it is installing the packages necessary for setup. So uh, when, this will take a few minutes, but when something comes up that we need to address, I'll go ahead and walk you through what you have to do. Okay, the first prompt here is just acknowledging that you should only install this on a brand new Ubuntu installation. So you shouldn't have any other things like websites or services running on this. This should be a, a fresh installation of Ubuntu. So that's the case for us. So we'll go ahead and hit enter. Uh, what email address do you want? So for me, I'm gonna do, instead of me at netwits.io, I'm gonna do tony at netwits.io and hit enter. And now for this, like I said in the beginning of the video, you want a host name that has a box subdomain name. So for us, box.netwits.io, uh, we already did that from the beginning, so we're good to go with this. Hit okay. Okay, and here we're gonna pick our time zone. So my server is in the United States and it is on the west coast, so Pacific Ocean. And one of the last steps that we have to do here in the installation process is set a password for our user account, Tony at netwits.io. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste my password in here, hit enter, and then verify that by pasting it again, hit enter, and we should be pretty much good to go. Okay, so uh, we are done with the installation. Now, this is the fun part, the part that a lot of people uh, struggle with, and this is the DNS settings that we have to configure in order for email to be uh, properly delivered and not marked as spam and all that good stuff. So um, what we're gonna do is go to your domain name registrar. We'll go ahead and log into the admin panel in a little bit, but I want you to go to your domain name registrar. Now that we have the IP, set up everything running on the server. Let's copy the IP address uh, and go to the DNS settings for your domain name. Again, netwits.io, here's the, the, the DNS settings. And this is Google domains, but uh, the, the user interface will be different for you, but uh, it'll be similar concepts, right? So the goal here is to set glue records and our name server. So up here in the upper right-hand corner, if you're using Google domains, go to global DNS settings. And we don't have any glue records set up right now, so let's click on Manage Glue Records. And what we're gonna do is to add two glue records. One is going to be at uh, ns1 name server one dot box, and you'll see it's auto-completing that, which is gonna be ns1 dot box dot netwits dot io. And then we're gonna add the IP address of our server, and then we'll add another one called ns2 dot box netwits.io and we'll add that same IP address. So go ahead and save those changes. And what we're basically gonna do is uh, make these our name servers. So if we go back out of here, and by default, we're using uh, Google's name servers, but we're gonna add instead our own custom name servers. And um, I think I was in here before, I might already have these in here, but yeah, what you wanna do in here is click on manage name servers and go ahead, this, this won't be here for you, but you might have to type in ns1.box. Your domain name dot whatever and ns2.box.netwits.io um, and then go ahead and click on save and as it says up here your domain isn't using these settings so instead of using the default name servers which are currently active we want to switch to the custom name servers. so click on the switch to these settings button and that will do its thing so uh, down here custom dns config is activated so now we're using uh, those name servers, which are actually running on our, our server at this point. Um, let's do our reverse DNS setting. Another important thing to do. So in your uh, server, wherever that is, Vulture for me, we want to go to uh, our server, click on our server, and then we want to find our settings. And right here, reverse DNS. So by default, it's just the IP address .com. We want to change that and make it box.netwits.io. 
So we'll save that. And we can, this might, yeah, it says changes may take six to 12 hours to propagate, but let's see if that happens any quicker. Um, I'm gonna open up a, a new terminal window here on my local machine and try to see with the dig command if that is configured at this point. So if we do something like dig dash X and then the IP address of your server, which mine is this one right here. So I'll copy that, paste. Let's see what kind of result we get back. And as you can see here, we do have that already configured. So uh, the IP address is reporting that the uh, reverse DNS setting PTR record is box.netwits.io. So we're good to go in that case. Um, if for some reason you don't have the dig command on your computer, you can use another tool like this one right here, the MX Toolbox. Let me copy that link and paste it in here. So yeah, mxtoolbox.com slash reverse lookup.aspx. So we'll, uh, we'll put the IP address in here and see if that reports a similar host name. And it does, so box.netwits.io. So we're good to go with reverse DNS. Uh, I think at this point, we can go ahead and log into the uh, admin panel. So use their URL link here, your IP address slash admin. We'll open up a new tab and go there. And you'll get this connection is not private. Um, if you can't bypass this and you're using Chrome, you can type in this is unsafe and you'll be you'll bypass that that page and now we can log in to our server so email address for me tony at netwits.io and let me copy my password over here and we'll paste that and go ahead and sign on in so this uh, system status checks page is super helpful um, this will tell you if there's anything wrong, like, like talking about the ports being blocked. So our outbound mail port SMTP is not blocked. Um, there's a whole bunch of other uh, checks that it's doing here. Um, this one about the SSH server uh, permitting password-based login, that's okay. We can fix that later. System updates have been installed and a reboot is necessary. We can do that later. Um, but some of the things that we have to look into are these MTA STS policy missing. That's just for me, it might be different for you. Um, and some of these other uh, domain settings down here. So what we basically wanna do is come over into the system tab and go to the TLS SSL certificate section. And in here, we want to provision uh, our certificates because we don't have any certificates installed for any of these domain names. So click on provision. And this will take a little while, so we'll just fast forward through this. Okay, and most of those were uh, installed, but for some reason, this one wasn't. I, I found that if you do this twice, it might work on the second time. So let's go ahead and provision again. Okay, and as you can see, those uh, last two domain names have been uh, an SSL certificate has been installed for those last two domain names. So we're good to go with that. And what that means is now we can use, instead of going to our IP address, uh, we can go to um, box.netwits.io and then the admin page. And we won't get that, uh, that warning about it being unsecure. And you'll see that we do have a secure connection with an SSL certificate installed. So go ahead and log back in. All right, we're logged back into our server. And as we scroll down here, we can see that uh, a lot of those messages have been taken care of. Uh, one specifically, this domain's DNSSEC, DS record is not set. So it kind of gives you uh, what you have to do here. Uh, basically, we have to take this information and put it into our DNS settings for our domain name. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, in my domain name, DNS settings, there's this DNSSEC section. So let's manage those and it wants a key tag, algorithm, digest type, and digest. So let's go ahead and give it that information. Uh, back over here, the key tag is this. So we'll just go ahead, copy, paste. Algorithm is KSK. Oh no, that's the key flag, sorry. Algorithm 13. Okay, so let's go to algorithm 13. Digest type, that would be two, SHA-256. And then the digest itself is this right here. So we'll paste that in and save. 
Okay, again, it says DS records are being published and should be active by August 13th at 8 a.m. It is August 11th, so that's two full days. Let's refresh the page and see if that goes away. If not, we might have to wait a little bit for that to disappear. Uh, so let's go ahead and just wait a few minutes to see if that goes away. Okay guys, and while we're waiting, um, actually for these MTA STS policies, if this is happening for you, this one here and this one here, um, what I found that you can do is open up your terminal window and just go through the mail in a box command, uh, setup again. So you can just type on your command line, mail in a box, hit enter, and uh, this won't overwrite anything. Um, it'll just go ahead and uh, reapply some of the files through the installation. Uh, so I found that that got rid of that error. Let's see if that happens again. So I'll go through this process and see what happens. So the setup is a whole heck of a lot quicker the second time through. Um, and as you can see, it's already picking up the fact that our host name is selected and configured. So let's go back here to the admin page. It might or might not kick us out. Let's see what happens. Uh, it does, so we'll have to log back in. But when we do, we scroll back down here and we'll see that we don't see those MTA STS policy uh, errors anymore. So we're good to go. The only other thing is this uh, DS record. This might, might or might not be okay. I'm not sure. Uh, we'll go ahead and do some tests though uh, for sending and receiving email. So how do we do that? If we go to mail and users and go to the instructions, you'll see that we can access our webmail at this URL. So let's go ahead and open that up in a new tab. And while it's opening, if you want to connect to Outlook or Gmail or another uh, external third party email client, this is what you would use to do that. This is all the information that you need. Okay, so let's log into our account. So our inbox, so Tony at netwits.io and then the password. All right, and here is your inbox. So let's do a test. Let's send an email, compose to uh, Tony teaches tech at gmail.com. And we'll say, hey bud, not bug, hey bud, what's up? Did you get this? Uh, what I'm gonna do to see this happening, hopefully in near real time, is to open up these two inboxes side by side. So we're logged in here as tonyteacherstech at gmail.com on the right, and then obviously tony at netwits.io in the left. So we'll go ahead and send that message. Uh, the message was sent, and over here, let's help it along, and there it is. So that email shows up. It's not in the spam folder. We don't see any warnings about it being spam. Um, from tonyanetwits.io to tonyteachestech at gmail.com. Let's respond and say, yes, I got it. Send that message back over. And same thing as before. Let's, uh, where's the refresh button? Help it along. Refresh, refresh, make this a little bit bigger so we can see. This is, we're in the compose. Here's our inbox. Uh, refresh. And there it is. So just uh, 30 seconds later, uh, yes, I got it. So we're able to send and receive mail. Uh, that's really good, even though that one DS record is not properly configured, but with time that will happen. A couple other things I wanna show you in here. If you wanna add users to your, uh, add multiple email accounts you can do that uh, under mail and users users and then you can add them here so let's say we want to do hello at netwits.io and we'll pick a password for them they're a normal user you can make them an administrator as well so we'll add that and uh, there we go so now we have two users on our system um, and the last thing i want to show you is i think under this web tab uh, you can host a small website uh, by default out of here. So uh, netwits.io, um, if we go to that, this is what that looks like. This is just a simple static HTML website. I'm sure you can do a little bit more than that, but at this point, this is all I looked into. So if we go to that URL, uh, let me double check what that was. Home user data www and then default in that directory we just have a simple index.html file um, and what does that say right now that says this is a mail in a box okay and you can see that in the code over here this is a mail in the box let's have it say like comment subscribe 
just so you know we're looking at the same thing we'll save that come over here refresh there we go guys i hope you found this video valuable if you did subscribe to this channel give the video a thumbs up and if you do end up subscribing i will see you in the next one